Guys, I cannot believe this throttling. The M3 MacBook Air is finally here, but can the fanless design of the MacBook Air actually handle that M3 chip? Or is it gonna thermal throttle like crazy? Well, today we are going to find out. Man, it's still incredible how thin and lightweight this is with such a large screen. And we waited for the M3 chip for a long time for that sweet three nanometer goodness with all the graphics updates. And that also was supposed to be more efficient as far as pulling not a lot of power, but it's a very powerful chip. So I'm excited to see how it performs. Now here, we have a software update right at the get-go, which we need to get done because we want to max out the performance. And as you guys can see, we have the space gray model it is very handsome now I actually did buy two other MacBook Airs we have the new coatings which are supposed to be anti fingerprints so if you guys want to see that test in our upcoming videos make sure you guys subscribe now in order to see how limited the M3 chip is in that chassis I have the M3 14 inch MacBook Pro that has a single fan on the inside so these are priced not too far apart especially with the great discounts which I'll link down below to this M3 14 inch and we are gonna see how much of a difference we have and if it's worth spending the extra for the one with the fan. Now I'm gonna start out with Geekbench 6. We have the latest version with the latest Mac OS. Let's go ahead and see how this performs. All right guys, we have our results and as far as single core, we have 3,149. Man, the M3 chip is super fast. And looking at the more expensive MacBook Pro with the fan, it's actually slightly lower. Now as far as multi-core, 12, thousand and thirty eight this is higher than we ever got on this machine eleven thousand five hundred seventy two on this run i remember this being about eleven thousand eight hundred the last time i tested it how in the world is a fanless macbook air actually outperforming it that is crazy now this macbook air does have the 10 core graphics option i'm going to go ahead and run the metal test so it's the same gpu as that MacBook Pro. All right, let's see the graphics score. We have 47,977 on the MacBook Pro and on the Air, 47,914. Just a smidge within margin of error difference. But of course, these are shorter tests, even though Geekbench 6 is a lot tougher, especially the updated one. But I'm still very impressed with these numbers, especially in the multi-core. Now, the other thing that we were not expecting is the support for two external displays where previously the M3 MacBook Pros, when they came out, could only do one. Now, you do need to have it in clamshell mode, but that is exactly how I use my MacBook Pro at my desk with my favorite MacBook accessory, the iVanky. Fusion Dock Max, which is exclusively designed for Apple Silicon Macs, not Intel ones or PCs. That's because it has dual Thunderbolt 4 chips inside, which makes it incredibly flexible and powerful. And it's why they provide this dual Thunderbolt connector, which allows for double the bandwidth. Because of that, you not only get 20 powerful ports, but also 96 watt pass through charging for your MacBook and support for up to four displays with up to 4K 60 Hz resolution. And if your MacBook only supports two displays, you can use the extra ports for data. Unlike the competition, I love that even the USB type A ports are 10 gigabit and the ethernet is 2.5. And with that, the design, which allows for extra airflow that leaves it running much cooler. This is the best dock for creatives, professionals, and those that would just want the best, most powerful dock for Apple Silicon MacBooks. Check out my full review that I made for it along with the links to purchase this beast down in the description below. And now let's push the graphics a bit more and test out some of that ray tracing because the compute test, well, that doesn't push it that hard. It's a variety of different workloads. So I have 3D Mark's Solar Bay running right here. This is just the standard test. And look at that, guys. The score is incredibly close. 
literally the FPS is just 0.1 FPS lower on the MacBook Air. The average is 51.5 compared to 51.6 FPS. They are identical here. And that is using ray tracing, which is great. But now I am gonna do the extreme stress test. Now this thing runs for 20 minutes. It records any sort of throttling. And I also have MX Power Gadget open so we could see the power usage. And it looks like at the peak, we had about the same 15.7. Here we're actually at 16 watts, but it's at a later scene. And looking at the MacBook Air, it is incredibly flat, meaning we're not getting any throttling yet, but let's wait a few minutes and get back to it. All right, guys, that did not take long. Look at this. Our GPU wattage is now down into the 13s, 12.8 there because our GPU is running at 103 degrees Celsius. Now, I am not sure if that's fully optimized yet for this new machine, but what I do know is that this wattage number does not lie. Now, if we look at the MacBook Pro, it's running at 16 watts right now, perfectly flat, and our GPU temperature now is at 99.8, slowly scaling up. Even without a fan running or running fast, it has a lot more thermal headroom because of the heat pipes that are built in. So the fan might keep up, but I don't think this thing's gonna throttle at all. So let's just go ahead and let this test run all the way through. Guys, I cannot believe this throttling. I was not gonna talk until this test was over, but we just hit seven watts compared to 16, less than half the power. That is insane. And we've went through about seven to eight minutes. So let me bust out this thermal cam. Look at all of that heat right there. We have 46 degrees and of course, it's not exhausting anywhere. On this one, smaller hotspot and it's 41 degrees. And then you guys see on the screen there where the exhaust comes out, definitely running much cooler and that is with it running at twice the power as well. So now I am really curious what the performance is gonna be comparing the same exact chips here. We'll see in just a sec. All right guys, the results are in and this is worse than we expected. If we look at the best loop score, we have 8,083 compared to 8,090 within margin of error. But then looking at the worst loop score, 5,916 for the MacBook Air compared to 7,933. That is a 33% difference in performance. And you guys can see just by the charts, here we started high, started dropping to a peak right here, kind of flattened out, dropped even lower compared to a tiny drop at the start, insignificant and completely flat. Now we have a 33% difference, but we saw that the wattage was half and sometimes even less than half the wattage. So it means that it's still maintaining performance and being more efficient when it throttles down, but there's still a big difference here. 98.1% stability compared to 73.2%. So if you care about long graphics tasks, this might not be the machine for you, but what about CPU performance? All right, we have Cinebench opened up right here and I let the machines cool down for a while. Now let's run this 10 minute throttling test. Right out of the get go, we have the same exact package power and CPU usage, maybe even slightly higher on the M3, just so we, like we saw in Geekbench actually scored slightly higher. And just 40 seconds in, we already are seeing throttling kick in because our CPU is getting very hot very quickly compared to a slower rise over here instead of just a spike up. And you can see instead of 3.6 gigahertz, we're running at 3.2, 3.3 right there. All right guys, it's been five minutes and you guys could see the steep decline in CPU power that is being applied. We're now at 2.96 gigahertz compared to the full 3.63 with this steady curve that actually slightly went up. And busting out the thermal cam here, we're looking at 45 degrees Celsius, one lower than in the graphic stress test, but it's been, you know, about five minutes. And here, 37. Wow, so the graphics does push it more so in terms of heat. But yeah, you guys see that difference right there. 
And with that, we actually looked into the M2 15 inch and that thing seemed to not overheat or throttle as much as this one. In the 3D Mark stress test, it had 80.8% stability compared to 73.2. So you guys can see, yes, the M3 chip does not work as well in this chassis because it's more powerful and it does throttle more. All right guys, it just got done here and look at the difference here between the efficiency core and performance. Here, the performance is practically the same because of throttling. I had a, a little blimp here, went back down. And the final scores, we have 644 compared to 591 after 10 minutes. That is actually not bad at all. That's only 8% difference between the machines even though it was literally using half the power, 10 watts compared to 20. Wow. It's like this chip was designed to be lower wattage, more efficient. And the crazy thing is here, I just got a 10% low battery warning and they didn't start at the exact same battery, but this machine through all these tests used way less power because of its throttling. So it looks like in terms of graphics performance, um, if you really need it, you definitely want something with a fan if you're doing long runs. For short little bursts of stuff, even like editing, uh, video editing, you'll be just fine here. And then on the CPU end, or if it's a blend of both graphics and CPU, the difference, 8%, is so small, but if it does heat up, your battery life lasts a long time because of the throttling. So that is actually pretty impressive. Wow, Vadim. Uh, of course, this is the 15 inch. It does have the 10 core, which made the graphics heat up a lot more. We are gonna be doing a comparison of the M2 13 inch compared to the M3 13 inch that has uh, both have eight cores. So I really wanna see what we get there with the same machines, just that one generational bump. That's gonna be interesting. Go ahead and click that circle above if you guys wanna see that video. Check out one of those videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.